Welcome to the Full Body Fix online talk show. This is a show that we make available to anyone that wants to attend with exclusive access to our VIPs. That means our VIPs, those who have chosen to be fitness doctor VIPs, they get exclusive access to asking our experts. They get first dibs on questions, connections, uh, free things that our experts provide to our listeners. So they get all of those exclusive access. And when we have interaction, they get first access for that as well. But I want to give each and every one of you, whether you're a VIP or not, a very warm welcome. I'm so grateful to have you here with us on the Full Body Fix online talk show. And today we have an amazing breakthrough session on mental fitness. Now, when I think of mental fitness, there's really nobody in my life that kind of takes the, the, the cake, so to speak. Actually, he doesn't eat cake, but, uh, but still, if, 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 if the cake was like uh, uh, some healthy organic meats and vegetables, he would take the cake. And that is Joel Weldon. Now, Joel Weldon is a Hall of Fame speaker. He's spoken for some of the biggest companies in the world. He's also helped some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world become better speakers. So when you think of famous people and how they got there with great presentation skills, this man is behind many of them. He's given 3,000 paid talks. This is people paying him a significant amount of money to talk, 3,000. And he's coached 10,000 speakers to become better speakers. Now, let me give you some personal background on Joel. Now, Joel's been a client of ours at The Fitness Doctor for 21 years, and he's the only person that when I, when I used to, which I don't train in-person clients anymore, but when I train clients in person, he, we could have a full-on conversation. I mean, full conversation while he's doing an exercise, even if it's a new exercise he just learned, and not miss a rep. That means that he could count every rep, be, be interact, interacting with me in conversation and never miss a rep. I've never had a client in over 30 years who has been able to do that other than Joel. So when I say his mental fitness is sharp, it's really sharp. But there's a reason why. It's because he spent his life in improving and helping others improve their speaking ability, which means not just the words coming out of your mouth, but also means your ability to listen take in information and do something effective with it in your outside world. Now, isn't that an important skill? Whether you're wanting to build a business or grow your business more, give a better talk at church, give a, get a, give a talk at somebody's wedding, be more connecting with family, motivate your kids more, just be more clear in any area of life. That is a very powerful skill. And when your mental fitness is more sharp like that, then you will, are much less likely to have cognitive or brain decline as you age. So all of our VIPs and all of those connecting with us here, I know we have one big thing in common, and that is to age gracefully, gracefully and optimally so you can have the very best life, right? So that's what we're going to be covering today. It's going to be an amazing, amazing session. So to kick things off, we're going to be doing a very fun exercise. Now pay very close attention. Here's how this is going to work. So staying mentally fit is just as important as being physically fit. You've been learning through our system how to keep your body in great physical condition. Now let me share with you how you can keep your mind in great mental condition as well. One of the qualities you need to be successful in today's fast changing world is to be able to think quickly on your feet to think of the right thing to say at the right time. This is part of Joel Weldon's ultimate speaking system, having a way to say the right thing in the right way at the right time. Now, let me give you an example of what Joel can do at age 80. Here's what I want you to do. You think of a noun. And for our VIPs, I'm going to be calling on one of you or, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. So you think of a noun that's a person, place, or thing, obviously, and then raise your hand. And you can do that by the reactions in the toolbar on the bottom of the Zoom. I'll, I call on you. you, you'll unmute yourself, tell us your name and what you do. And then 
say, Joel, my noun is X. So again, you're going to tell us your name, what you do, and then say, Joel, my noun is X. Joel will then immediately begin a speech using your word. If it's the name of a person, then it might be two words. Now think about this for a second before we do this exercise. Think about how difficult it would be if I just give you a noun right now and you have to immediately craft a well-spoken speech in just a blink of an eye. As soon as I give you the noun, you have to be able to do that. Think how difficult, right? It's not an easy task. Have, try this with someone sometime and you'll see, especially when they start giving you random nouns, it, it becomes very difficult. Okay, so now for our VIPs, Please go ahead and raise your hand. Right, before, Robbie, let me stop you. Before you call on anybody, let me say hello to you for joining us on this Saturday morning. And Robbie, thank you for those kind words in the introduction. And as you heard, Robbie and I go back 21 years, three days a week. That's a lot of time spent together. And the only reason I'm in the condition I'm in now at 80 is because of this training that I've done to be biometrically sound, waking up every morning, nothing hurts and everything works. I mean, that should be your goal. And age should not be a limitation to what you can do physically. And you're in this program because you have accepted these premises that Robbie has presented to you. And I'm living proof that they work. I mean, I was almost 60 when we started and I was in fairly good shape, but I wasn't in the condition I'm in now much better than I was 21 years ago. So that's what you need to think of, the physical part. But this special hour for you on this Saturday is about your mental physical conditioning as well. And it is physical, the mental thing, because your head carries around your body. If you're not thinking right, what's the sense of going anywhere or doing anything? Now, Robbie set this up as, as an exercise, which I think would be a great experience but I want you to think of your experience, that you speak all day long. I'm not suggesting that you want to be a professional speaker, but in any kind of situation, if you're working, and I'm still working full-time at 80, never going to retire. Retire means you're out of service. And also, I'm going to be selling you in this hour. I don't want to sell you on a number of things. I want to sell you that number one, age is not a limitation for you. No matter how old you are, you can still keep improving. Number two, you do these things by improving every day. That if you want to be a better speaker, you speak. If you want to be stronger, you got to work out. You've got to do things to get things. And once you accept that, you don't stop doing things. And the third thing I want to sell you on is that speaking effectively is a learned skill, just like how to do exercises the right way. The first time you do an exercise, you don't really know how to do it. But if you keep doing it, you get better and better at it. And that's exactly what speaking is. So let me give you the three premises about speaking before you hear me speak about this assignment that Robbie has set up. That being an effective speaker, premise number one is a learned skill. We just said that. Number two, be yourself. It is not acting. Being an effective communicator is being you. The worst thing you could do is pretend that you're enthusiastic when you're not. Because being congruent means you're you. You're, you're so relaxed when you're you. You get self-conscious when you try to be somebody you're not. So that's premise number two, be you. And if you're dull and boring, that's how you should speak. And we'll hopefully have time for me to address how that can work for you. And the third premise is, it's always about your audience. It's not about you. It's about you. And as a matter of fact, I brought your name along with me. And that's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to just you, one person out there. And then the fourth thing is I do have a system called the ultimate speaking system. We've got a special offer for you. I'll tell you about that later. But the main thing is that your mental and physical ability, no matter what your age is, doesn't have to diminish. Now, with that said, let's call on your first VIP member and give me a noun and tell me your name 
and we'll proceed. Robbie, it's yours. Okay. So now the our first one is going to be Alice. So Alice, um, obviously your name's Alice, so, but, but tell us uh, your full name, what you do, and then give us the now. Hi, Joel. I'm Alice Dobbs, and I run a small horse farm, and my noun is Bannister. I didn't so, hear what you did. You run a small horse farm. Oh, horse farm. Okay. And Robbie, did you did you want? Yeah. So let's make this even more difficult, Joel. So let's right. Let's really. I'm going to put you on the spot. So let's tie the noun in with that. Alice runs a small horse farm. So let's pretend that you're at this horse farm and you're using this word banister to talk to a group of horse farmers, right? And by, by the way, guys, are you getting the point like of how difficult this would be? Like, like, like all of us would be stumbling over our words. Okay, Joel. Well, congratulations. You made a great decision as a horse owner to attend this special seminar on a Saturday morning. And one of the things as a horse owner, you know, is horses eat every day and they need exercise every day and they got to be taken care of on a continual basis, just like you have to be. And one of the things that Alice in bringing me to you today wanted me to address is how important mental and physical fitness is for horses. And one of the things that we're going to discuss is the banister technique. Now, normally you've seen jumping, you've seen riding around and having a, chasing an animal like lassoing a cow or something like that. But the Bannister process was developed by Roger Bannister many years ago. He was the fastest man ever to at that point to break the four minute mile. And the basic premise of the Bannister technique is number one. All right. So let me just stop right there. How was that, Alice? That was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, please remember, I made all that up, and there is no such exercise as the banister technique. <laughs> all right, let's take another one. Yes. Mark. And this time, we'll go faster, so there's no thinking time. I'm just going to write down name, career, and the noun. Uh, Dr. Fetter, you're next. Oh, you're muted, sir. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll send you a little. Doctor Fetter, you're muted. I'll send you a little link to unmute. Doctor Mark Feeder. I'm a podiatrist, and the word is beach. Speech. Beach. Beach. Oh, beach. Correct. Beach. Welcome to this special podiatrist meeting. And one of the things you have to congratulate yourself on is getting up early on a Saturday morning and doing something that's out of your normal operational range. And what we're going to do today at your special program hosted by Robert, Robbie and by Mark is talk about an important way that you can get into even better physical condition. Now, most likely you're training at a gym, you're doing online programs with the fitness doctor, that's great. But there's one other thing that you need to think of to not only get your body in shape, but to, but to build your, your aerobic fitness. And that is running. Now you can go out on, on, a, on a road and run, kind of hard on your knees, but one of the best places that you can run is on a beach. Because one of the things that a beach has, it has soft sand. And as each one of your feet hits that sand, it's absorbing that shock and not damaging your knees or your back. So put that as your things to do in 2022. Beach running is going to be the key to being a fit and vibrant person every day of your life. So we're going to get into the seven most important things you need to know about beach running. Number one is, all right, let's stop there. That's, that's, that was awesome. That was awesome. And, okay, and actually Mark, true. Well, thank it's you. It's actually really good. I'm sure Dr. Fetter would agree to walk in sand and eventually run in sand. So that not only, not only was that well put together, Joel, but there was actually some good science to that. 
Good. Better than patient. the banister technique for the horses, because I don't think that's going to help Alice at all, unless she's got steps for them to walk up. All right. I need, let's I go to, let's do one more. Professional consultations. So, Dr. Fetter, say again. I said I could use them for some professional consultations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Diane, you are next. All right. Um, my name is Diane Bowes. And um, I am retired from the military, but I now uh, coach CrossFit and I coach um, boxing against Parkinson's. And uh, my word is love. All right, everybody settle down here. Listen, I know we're in a gym. We're gonna talk about CrossFit, but since all of you come from the military, you know how to follow orders. So here's the first order. Shh. Pay attention, because what we're going to do today is something you're not only going to love, but it's going to really help you. Because you have been trained in the military, and now you're following through with your fitness career out of the military by coming to a CrossFit gym and getting into shape, there's a number of things that most people don't talk about when it comes to training. Yes, you've got to eat right. Yes, you've got to exert your body to break down muscles so they can build up again. Yes, you've got to have instruction so you don't hurt yourself. Because you know the statistics, over 90% of the people who go to a gym get hurt doing gym exercises unless they have a coach that can guide them to do it the right way. So what is this missing ingredient that most training programs don't do? And even in the military, they sometimes miss. But today at our session, we're going to focus on a very powerful four-letter word. Matter of fact, it's such a powerful four-letter word, you could use it anywhere at any time with almost anyone. And that word is love. So let's start off with three different things you need to love. First, you need to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, no one else will. Second thing you need to love is what you're doing. Even though you've retired from the military, you still have activities. Do you wake up every morning loving what you're about to do? And if you don't, then get rid of that and find something that will make you fall in love with it and have that passion. And the third love is for those around you that you care about, your family and your friends, and love them. All right, let's stop there. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. And now we got heartfelt on top of giving scientific fact. And, and wow, Joel, that is amazing. Let's let's do just one more. We have All right, one more. kind of a lot. Where it's kind of, I'm starting to push the time envelope a little bit, but we have Fred, another VIP, Fred, we'll go with yours. And then after that, Joel, let's move forward from, from, this, uh, from this speaking event, speaking contest of seeing, testing your brain, which I see is not really testing your brain. This is like a uh, like, uh, child's play to you. This is no, so, no brainer. Well, when you don't have a brain, it doesn't matter. Yes, go ahead. Fred. <laughs> All right, Fred, what do you do? All right. I'm an ESL teacher. I'm an ESL teacher. And my- Say that again. What kind of teacher? ESL, English. For oh. English learners, oh. ESL. So e English, English as, as a second sex. language. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I've ESL. not heard that term before. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and your word. My, and my word is stunt kite. Stunt kite. Stunt kite? Yep. I don't know what that means. Is that okay? A... Yeah, go ahead if you if you want. Go, go ahead, go ahead, friend, sorry. All right, it's just a kite with two strings and it allows you oh, to, to, oh, to make the kite, kite dance. Okay, yeah. and so it dances around, great. Yeah. You got All right, can everybody understand me? I understand that English is your second language, but I'm gonna be using the only language that I've been schooled in, which is English. And you're here because you speak two languages. And one of the things when it comes to learning a different language is your mind has to work quickly. It has to be able to dart back and forth from your native tongue to the language that you're learning. And of course, in my class, what you're learning is English. So as students in this class this year, one of the things that will help you is to just visualize a kite. 
Imagine that you're on the beach. Matter of fact, the horse runs by while you're on the beach, but you're watching this kite because you love things that fly. You love a lot of things in your life. But as you see this kite, you notice there's something different about it. It doesn't just stay in one place. It moves left and right. It goes up and down. It's called a stunt kite. And what this does is very different than an ordinary kite. Because just by controlling those, those cords, you can make it go up or down, right or left. Now, what does that have to do with learning English? It has everything to do with learning English because you have to make those mental adjustments in your mind from your native tongue into English. It's just like that kite operator is moving those cords to make that kite go right or left or up or down. And you have to be able to do the same thing. So when you finish this class, not only are you gonna be able to think in English, you're going to be able to speak in English. And by having two languages, you're going to have a greater advantage in life than the ordinary people, like this guy I met, Joel Weldon, who just only speaks one language. So visualize that stunt kite, and let's get started with today's Saturday lesson, which you're going to love. That's awesome. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. All right, Fred, Thank was you. that okay? <laughs> well, so what do you guys think? It's pretty impressive, huh? Yeah, random noun and tying it in with what they did is, is amazing. So I just had an idea. We're not going to do it today, but maybe we have another. We have a part two of this, and those who would like to give some type of talk, the, the other amazing thing Joel does is he can listen to a speech and immediately after I mean, you can give like a 10 minute talk and immediately after he remembers all of the speech, everything they said, and has very specific points on coaching and improving. It's, it's amazing. I, I watch him do it. And I'm like, I don't know how you remembered all of that, every little detail. So part two. With that, Joel, I'm going to turn it over to you and let's hear your words. Of right, well, let's have, let's have some questions when it comes to speaking. Before we get into what you can do, you can do exactly what I do. You did it, you could do exactly what you just heard. If you have a system, that was using a system. And when you have a system, it simplifies everything. That's why you are working with Robbie, because with the fitness doctor, it is a system. I've been using that system for 21 years. And that's why my body still functions. And because your mind is just as important and if, uh, more so important than your body, you've got to be doing that too. So how about any questions, comments, or thoughts on what you just saw and how that might be beneficial to you? Robbie, I'll let you be yeah, in charge. Let's, yeah, let's, so any of our VIPs, go ahead and click reactions if you, if you have questions uh, on anything we've covered so far, Joel's covered. And if you have uh, questions, VIPs, let us know. And if not, we'll go to a non-VIPs next. So I'll give you just about 10 seconds to see any hand raising. And I don't see any hand raising. That was remarkable. <laughs> Our VIP Alice says that was remarkable. Thank you. Okay, so Nancy has a question. Her question is, uh, sorry, let me search and find. Did, Did you, you ever, ever get stage fright? Okay, that's a great question. Is that Nancy that asked that? Yes, that's correct. Nancy. Okay. One of the reasons that speaking in front of a group is listed, you know, they have the book of lists. And in the top 10, almost every year, and it's been over 50 years since I first heard that, speaking in front of a group is one of the greatest fears that adults have. And one reason is, because they get nervous in front of a group and people don't like to be nervous. So Nancy's question really to me is, do I get nervous? No. And I don't think you need to either. And with all the people that I've coached, they aren't nervous, they're excited. Because one of the ways to get rid of nervousness is to accept 
the third premise that I told you my entire system is based on. It's not about you, it's about your audience. So let me give you a metaphor, a story. And this is a great way for you when you communicate to make a point. So let's just make believe, Nancy, you're a nurse. And you're going to work, you're wearing a white outfit and there's a traffic accident in front of you, you're in a rural area, you stop the car and there's a woman laying there bleeding profusely. Nancy, unmute yourself. Would, would you help that woman? You're not at work, but you're a nurse. I certainly would help. Okay, Nancy. Now, as you run over to this woman and you assess what's happening and you realize that she's got some cuts in her leg, you've got to stop that, put a tourniquet on, and uh, you decide the only thing you have is your waistband for your uniform. Would you use that? I certainly would, Joel. Would you? Do you think yeah. you'd worry about getting any blood on your outfit while you're doing any of this? Absolutely not. Would you be thinking about anything to do with Nancy? No. Would you think about being late for work? What's going to no. happen? I have to change my uniform. Get out of this. No, your entire focus would be on that woman that is bleeding. What you have done is you've gotten yourself out of the way. And what causes nervousness is self-consciousness. And when you are not self-conscious, when you are not thinking of you, I wonder how I look, I wonder how I sound, I wonder what they're thinking, I hope this is going over. You free yourself. It's all about your audience. And as a a nurse, let's say, that you're, that you're practicing and you're going to talk to other nurses about something that you're an expert in, forget yourself. It's all about them, not about you. And that's why that metaphor of helping somebody, and no matter what your career or job is, you would not be thinking of getting blood on your clothes or ruining your shoes or anything like that. You would be helping this victim of the accident and fully divorced from focusing on yourself. So if you feel nervous when you're getting up in front of a group, two things can help you. Number one, preparation. The reason that most people aren't comfortable speaking is they're not prepared. They haven't thought about what they're doing. And one of the things I never recommend is memorizing anything. Because, uh, one of the things I recommend is never, uh, one of the things I recommend is never memor. All right, did you just see what happened? I'm trying to think of the next word because I got a script in my mind and the word isn't there. And, and people look like, they look like a tree full of owls sometimes just standing there because the word isn't coming up that they've memorized. Don't memorize anything. You're talking about something you know. You've been speaking since you're two or three years of age. Just be you. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. Remember, there's no perfect person, except one. That's the one your spouse could have married. And Robbie, I know you've probably heard about him from Patty. Yeah. Well, married yeah. 58 <laughs> years to Judy. I can tell you, I hear about Buzzy 58 years later. But seriously, if you want to get rid of nervousness, be prepared and get yourself out of the way. Is that helpful, Nancy? Yes, thank you so much, Joel. That's okay. really great. You're just wonderful. <laughs> well, you are. Thank you for what you do. All right, thank Robbie, you. who's next? Any anyone else have questions before we move Question, on? Question, comment. Session? We'll give about 10 seconds here if anybody has questions. Oh, Nancy, yes. Yeah, the other uh, our VIP Nancy. Other another Nancy. is it another Nancy? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nancy, number two, it's yours. Yes, yes. Hi. Hi. So I recently graduated from a mindfulness meditation teacher certification program and did a six-week teaching practicum. And you, you talked about preparation. I am a preparer and I am a writer. And so I tend to write down everything I want to say word for word. I 
don't memorize it, but I'm very note dependent because of the fear of going off script and not saying everything that I know that I've so beautifully written. So what recommendations do you have for that? Well, it's great that you prepare. And because you are so diligent in what you're doing and you've taken this course, you do know what you're talking about, correct? Stay, stay unmuted. Yes. Nancy number two. Yes. Okay. So you do know what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Keep in mind your audience doesn't. They don't know what you've prepared. If you forget something, no one knows. It's not like a school play where you have to say this and on the word stop, somebody says their line and you've got to have a script. So the other suggestion is, aside from not worrying if you forget something, is use notes. I always recommend notes. Not a script that you would read, but keyword notes. So let me give you an example. Since we're here to talk about what I learned in this course over the last six weeks, I made some notes that I'd like to share with you. And actually, there are seven things that I think will be helpful to you as you proceed in this area of mastering meditation. The first thing I wrote down was clear your thinking. Okay, so the suggestion is, if you wanna use notes, don't ever use a piece of paper. So if I was using this piece of paper, first it flops around and look how, look how it stands out. I have the same piece of paper on a black card. So with every one of my coaching clients, when they introduce somebody, put it on a black card stock. This is solid, it's not gonna flop around. And as you can see, it's not that obvious. Also, when you tell an audience that you wrote down the seven things about meditation that are gonna help them, that's a plus. When you are prepared, it shows that you cared enough to do this in advance. Okay, so the second thing, what this does, it's like using a slide deck. Slides are notes for the speaker. They keep you on track. And what this will do, if you will use notes or visuals, it frees you from thinking, okay, so the first one was clear your thinking, Oh, what was number two? Num um, number two. Oh. So the, your mind, while you're speaking about number one, is trying to search for number two. But by having a note that number two is physical setup, you are free to just talk about that first idea. So because you are prepared and organized, that's wonderful. Then use that structure and just pick the key words you need for each of those seven points on meditation. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, Nancy, number two, good. All right. What else we got, Robbie? Uh, Via, did you still have a question? I remember seeing your hand raise. Uh, I just remembered that. Via, our, our VIP Via. The two Vs no, in I'm one spot. I'm good. He is excellent. I am that person. The paper's shaking. I forget my name. I don't know where I am. <laughs> All right. Uh, Via, 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 tell me, what did you do, Via Carpenter? I, I need to do all the things you said. First, I need to be more prepared. Well, Second, what, what do you do? What, what kind of work are you at? Well, right now in my retirement, I'm a professional stager for designing houses, designing room spaces. Designing, on. designing uh, houses, like open houses? No, design, designing rooms, like staging rooms for uh, resale. Oh, staging rooms. Okay. Yes. So you're, a, let's say, a designer then? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's say you're talking to other designers. And I, I run a furniture business. Uh -huh. And I've heard about Via Carpenter. And I've invited you in. So listen. Since we've got to put these rooms together, I wanted to bring you today somebody who knows a lot more about this subject 
than I do because the staging is so important. If we stage those rooms right, not only is it going to look better, it's going to feel better, but people are much more apt to order our furniture. So since we're in the furniture business, I bought in Via Carpenter. And for the last seven years, what she's been doing is helping people set up rooms so they look just perfectly. Now, please keep in mind, this is not what Via does, make presentations in front of groups like you. This is stepping out of her comfort zone. And in talking to her ahead of time, sometimes she says, I even forget my name right. when I get up in front of a group. But I do know that she knows what she's talking about. So if she starts to forget something, please don't worry. It's This is just a new experience for her and not something that she's experienced in like she is in staging these rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the introduction, we just set it up. The same thing if you're boring. If you're boring, please don't try to not be boring because then you're not going to be you. So, Robbie, let me just share this story, and I think it would be helpful. Many years ago, I was hired by a Fortune 1000 company at the national sales meeting, three-day event. I was the closing speaker. I'm sitting in the front row waiting to get up to wrap up their three-day meeting, and then the CEO was sitting next to me who was going to introduce me, and he said, right at the first break before the end of the meeting, right after lunch, he said, Joel, the next part of the meeting is going to be boring. If you want to leave, you can. I said, what are you talking about? Well, our chief financial officer, Bob, is giving you all these numbers. He has an hour. We have him up at every meeting. He's the most boring guy you ever met. It's terrible. Matter of fact, I need to have you help him next year because he's terrible. Everybody falls asleep. So I watched Bob, and of course, he was absolutely true. He's the most boring person that you probably have ever met in your whole life. So during that year, I contacted Bob, and I set up a meeting. We did a Zoom call, even though it was back just when Zoom was getting started. No, no, no. It, so it couldn't have been in the 80s. It, well, it must have been in the 2000s, yes. So anyway, when, when we did this virtual call, maybe it wasn't even Zoom. We did a virtual call. And he said, so I understand the CEO, you're going to fix me. I said, no, Bob, I'm not going to fix you. I'm only going to ask you to do two things at the national sales meeting different than you did this year. He said, what do you want me to do? I said, let me write your introduction and I'm going to give you an opening to use and don't do anything different. You mean I don't have to act like Tony Robbins? I said, no, you're not Tony Robbins. Just be Bob. He said, okay, I'll do what you say. Because you were pretty good at that last year's meeting. I said, well, thank you. So I wrote the introduction and basically here's the short version of what it said. So the next part of our national sales meeting is our chief financial officer who's going to give you as salespeople the numbers you need for the year. Normally at this part of our program, uh, Bob comes up and gives you these numbers and everybody falls asleep. Bob is a boring speaker. Matter of fact, he's a boring person. If you were to look in the dictionary under the word boring, you will see Bob's picture. That's why at the corporate office, we call him boring Bob. So this year we've got a plan. Because these numbers are so important. If you don't get these numbers right, you're not going to have the sales year you could. So here's the rule. If the person next to you starts to fall asleep while Bob is boring you up there, you got to wake him up. Now, for those of you in the front row, and then I wrote on the introduction for the CEO to say, say point to everybody in the front row. So he slows down. He says, now, for those of you in the front row, your assignment is if Bob, starts to fall asleep while he's talking, you got to run up on stage and wake him up. Okay, with that, please help me welcome Boring Bob. They gave him a standing ovation to walk out. He walks out with his little notebook. He puts it on the lectern. He looks down and then he says, um, some of you know that I've been married to Evelyn for 23 years. And, and he doesn't look up. He just looks down. And, and on her first date, she slapped me. No, I wasn't getting fresh. She just thought I was dead. Well, I'm not dead. I know I look and act like I'm dead. But I am so excited about this year and the great year you've had. It just doesn't show on the outside. So please forgive my lack of external enthusiasm. It's all going on inside. 
And you won't be dead either this year if you make good use of these numbers. So let's get started with today's program. And at the end, they gave him a standing ovation. He came up as the third best speaker of a three-day meeting by not doing anything else but setting it up better. Since that time, the CEO has been in touch with me. About five years later, he was the number one rated speaker every year after that first year. And he said he's made a hobby of collecting boring jokes. And every year he opens with up a joke about how boring he is. And because he's a smart guy, he comes up with something terrific. And then he gives the same boring presentation. Now, why did I tell you that story? Because the second premise of our ultimate speaking system is to be yourself. Boring Bob was boring. Can you imagine if he tried to come out like Robbie and had all of this energy and excitement? People would say, what is going on? That's not Bob. The most important thing you have to build your business, to be a success, is your credibility. Is to be you. To be you. And that's what Boring Bob points out. Does that make sense? All right, Robbie, what else are we going to do? We still got, what, about 18, Seven. 19 minutes? Yeah, 17, 19 minutes. Yep, yep. Let's Any see. other questions or... Any other any other questions before we move forward? Yes, Alice. Yeah. How do you maintain such a good memory? Alice, is that right? Did you say? Yes, yes. Alice. I don't have a particularly good memory. I have an ordinary memory. I don't even know my own social security number. I don't fill my mind with things that aren't important. I have it written down. If I need it, I can go look it up. I don't know my daughter's phone numbers because I have auto dial. But what I've been doing today, listening, we talked about a banister for a horse farm. We talked about love. We talked about having two different languages. We talked about a kite. I just listened and was not thinking of anything else. The most important thing for you to do is focus on what you're doing now. Have you ever seen people at a cocktail party? We're getting to the holiday time and you're gonna be going to parties, you know, COVID-19, we're not quarantined anymore, you're out. And you're talking to somebody, Alice, and, and they're, they're looking elsewhere. They're looking behind you and seeing, seeing somebody else. How does that make you feel? They're distracted. But when you're talking to somebody at a cocktail party, just look at the person. If somebody important comes by, don't even look at them. You can catch them there later. And that's the same thing about speaking, is listen to what's going on and think about how that applies to your audience. So each of those little examples of thinking quickly on your feet was based on this system that I've created. And it's called the ultimate speaking system because that's what it is. It's a series of videos, audios, printed materials. And we've got a special for Robbie's people that we're including coaching calls with me too and a 50% savings. So what you can do, and let me just give you the information. Patty, I'm sure we'll put it out. If you just go to ultimate speaker, ultimate speaker, not speaking, ultimate speaker.com. And the promo code is fit. That's Robbie's thing, fit. You get a 50% savings on the ultimate speaking system. Now there is our coaching programs on there, but that's not with the promo code. There is a special on that. So if you want individual coaching, like I do for many entrepreneurs with me or one of our coaches, you can just get on my calendar next week or whenever you want by going to talk to joel.com talk to joel that's j-o-e-l.com you'll get my calendar link pick out a half hour time and we'll talk about how you can become an even better speaker so this whole system is normally two thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars lifetime membership once you're in you never pay another penny plus then we're going to give you three one hour coaching sessions with me and one of my coaches 
on the call with me to help you be an even better speaker. And it's 50%. So it's, what did I write down the number? It's $14.99. That's it. Real simple. And it's 100% guaranteed. If you don't think this is the best thing you've gotten, you get your money back. I mean, is it worth $1,500 to be a better speaker, to think quicker on your feet, to know that you'll not be nervous when you talk? And this system keeps growing. Eight years ago, I had like five videos. Now we have about 200 videos. So every time something comes up, I put out a new video and it becomes part of the member site. So there's lots of tools available, plus that one-on-one -on -one option. So if that makes sense, just go to ultimatespeaker.com, use the promo code FIT, save 50%. And if you want to talk to me directly about helping you one-on-one, -on -one, just go to talktojoel.com. That's it. Now, I told you I was selling you different things, four different things. My definition of selling is selling is helping. If you took that meditation course and you spent all of those weeks in training, now you're getting other people to be meditators, that's selling. But just think, every time you, somebody says, do you sell anything? Yes, selling is helping. When you know that you have something good and it's gonna benefit others, you're helping them. And trust me, if you invest in the system, $1,500 is not gonna change my life one bit, but it's gonna dramatically improve your life tremendously. And these ideas are simple, simple concepts. And I've used them throughout this whole interview for the last 48 minutes. So that's what you can do if this makes sense to you as the next step to improve your ability to communicate and increase your income. Warren Buffett, you know who he is, the, considered the greatest investor of all time, said, if you want to increase your value as a person by 50%, learn to be an even better speaker. That's powerful things from a wise billionaire. Improve your ability to speak and think quicker on your feet, to say the right thing at the right time. And to have a guide to help you. And that's what you'll get. What's taken me almost 50 years to learn is all comprised in that system. All right, Robbie. Yeah. What else are we going to do? So I have to say, Joe, that I'm very grateful to, you know, we, I've, I've, I've helped you have quality of life. You've taken your amazing mental state and, you know, you've, you've been so consistent. So that's one of the big reasons for your physical progress. We've gone through uh, torn rotator cuffs, knee replacements, all the things that you had uh, kind of dilapidated in your body when we started. And, and that was amazing. But in, in, in our relationship together, I've gained tremendous value because how many, how many sessions have we trained together? Something like 1,700 or something. Oh, I like think that. it's over 1,800 sessions. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so I, I've been very fortunate to have you. In now, I would have been counting, as you said, if you, yeah. uh, how, uh, how many each one was. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, it's, it's been a huge, 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 uh, ex extreme value in my life because we've had so many deep conversations in all of our sessions together about speaking and presenting and has made all the difference in the world in my life. So I just want to express gratitude to you. Oh, good. Here. Yeah. And with that, let's go back to questions and let's, okay. let's create some more power here in this session. So, and then um, I have, before we wrap up, I just have a short closing Okay. And then you wrap it up. So let's go. Let's can see if I, next. Can I express my gratitude? Oh, this <laughs> sure. lovely princess is on the. So are yeah. you taking that bilingual course from Portuguese to English? Fred, no, no, Fred, no. Fred, Fred has some openings in his class if you need to do that. <laughs> now I'm taking German and Spanish. Ooh. <laughs> Mr. Joe, I want to say that I had the pleasure of attending Toastmasters with Mr. Joe and the few sessions that I had, which Toastmasters can be really intimidating because you are in the room full what of is, people. So what is Toastmasters for those who might not know what Toastmasters is? I explained. Well, Toastmasters is a worldwide 
self-help group to help people be an even better speaker. And the reason I joined Toastmasters in 1969, on September 9th, 1969, was the day my life changed because I couldn't need my Sunday school class in silent prayer. Speaking was the worst thing I could do. I'd never stood up in front of a group and talked. And Toastmasters was the linchpin that turned that around. And after joining a club, unable to even stand up in front of 20 people and say my name without being nervous, I ended up at the world's finals and placed in the top three in the world out of 60,000 members in 1974. And that launched my professional speaking career. And I'm still an active member of Toastmasters today, over 50 years later. So yeah. every Monday at noon in Scottsdale, I'm at the Chats Toastmasters Club, keeping sharp and improving skills because you learn every time you watch a speaker. Every speaker you watch can teach you two things, what to do or what not to do. And if you use that experience, you can get better, much better. I'm glad that was helpful for you. I it, called it, Patricia yes. Princess. It was it was really helpful. I, I had just arrived in America, and Robbie Rob is always pushing us to do better, right? And Robbie, oh no, you must go to Toastmasters. You must, you know, you must speak English in front of people. And speaking another language is already intimidating enough. Now, speaking another language in a room full of professionals when you're not really great fluent, it's another level. And then you go and then it's, oh, you must put this and this in your speech. And it's like, oh, oh my good. So all, all I did, I did it. I even got a little award that made me feel very happy. I still have it. But all these things that Mr. Joe taught me eight years ago is still in my mind. And you're very inspirational, always. Well, well, Toastmasters is a great thing. Now, in our club, you only get to speak three times a year because you have other members. There's three speakers at every meeting. There's like 50 meetings a year, so divide that by the number. It's a long, slow process. It took me five years. And that's why I created the Ultimate Speaking System for people who are in a hurry. They, and you get a quick start program with it, which you'll see on the website. That's included in the ultimate speaking system. And nobody is taking more than three hours if they never had a message to create a message using quick start. So that's included in your investment as well. But it's to save you time. I mean, I've spent the time to create all of these systems, then you can use them. And the thousands of people that have used them have benefited from that. So make that decision. You've decided to improve your physical condition Keep improving your mental condition by using speaking to help you grow your business, increase your income, and, and share your wisdom with the world. All right, Robbie, back to you. Do we have any other comments, questions, or are we going to wrap up? Yeah. Um, Lena, P Patricia passed me a note saying to call on you. Is that, did you have a question, Lena, our VIP, Lena? I think it's answered. I was okay. interested in what number one was because you said that being yourself is number two, but I think it was preparation. And no, Le Lena, that, that number one is that being an effective communicator speaker is a learned skill. Okay. That Thank when you. you do it, you will get better. Now, we just had an added training we offered our members yesterday uh, with probably the world's greatest expert on YouTube videos, Evan Carmichael. And Evan has 3 million followers on his YouTube channel. His videos have been seen about half a billion times. That's B with a billion with a B. And he gave our members of the Ultimate Speaking System training on videos. But the most interesting thing he said was the first 300 videos I did were terrible, awful. By 700, I was really happy with what I was doing. And I'm very critical of myself. When people heard that, I mean, when somebody has 3 million followers on their Facebook channel and has half a billion views of those videos, he's got to be amazing. 
he wasn't amazing when he started. And you don't have to be either. And I certainly wasn't either. That first presentation I gave was terrible. But then you give a second one and you get better. And in our system, one of the tools we have is how to get feedback to know what you should be working on and getting even better. And how to groundhog day your message so that you think, if I could do this all over again, what would I have done to make it even better for my audience? So those kind of things are all available, just like what Robbie is doing in the physical fitness area with his biomechanical optimization of your body, that everybody is different and it needs to be customized to you and following a system that works. That's the key, that works. And I guess the reason I'm here, Robbie, I'm living proof that it <laughs> right. works. And before right. our session today, I was up on my ladder. I was had to cut down an olive tree, big branch is about seven inches thick with my chainsaw, then load it all in to get rid of the pieces. And then that was after my one hour bike ride with my two golden retrievers starting at 6.30. So you've got to be able to do these things. And I certainly don't feel like I'm 80. Thanks to what Robbie has taught me and for the fact that what we're sharing with you is to improve your thinking by becoming an even better speaker. So you can think quickly on your feet. And everything you saw me do in those impromptu sessions with those words came from using the tools in the system, how to open, how to customize your message, how to organize your thinking, how to use notes. Well, we're getting up to closing time. So would you like me to make my official closing and then you wrap us up? Yes, please. All right. So one thing to think of is whenever you close a message, it should be like, a bow on a gift box. So if I was to give you this gift, you might say, well, this looks pretty nice, right? But what if I said, oh, would you rather have this gift? This one has a bow on it. And that's what your closing should always be. Not your call to action. That's go to the website, ultimatespeaker.com. That's the call to action. The closing is like the bow on a gift box. So here's my closing for you. If you would ask me to summarize everything that I've learned in all of these decades of speaking and coaching speakers and creating this ultimate speaking system and the quick start program, here it is in 22 words. Speak to your audience about what they need in an organized way they can follow and get yourself out of the way. Robbie? That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's it's what you just said is exactly what we do. <laughs> and it was probably no accident spending 1700 sessions with you that that's the outcome of our exact system is get myself. It's not about me. It's about each and every one of our VIPs. And and I know you function the same exact way with your speaking coaching. So can yeah. I say something? Yep. Go ahead. I Sarah. would like to invite everybody to unmute and clap Mr. Joe. <laughs> this, this was an awesome presentation. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Oh, thank you. And make it a wonderful weekend. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy yes. holidays to you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Last thing, Robbie, what are we doing next week for the Full Body Fix talk show? Um, next week, we are going to be talking about nutrition and it's specifically how to optimize your body composition with nutrition. So how to optimize your muscle, how to decrease body fat, what's the best way to do that. If you're starting with a lot of excess body fat, what are some specific strategies to do? If you don't have a lot of excess body fat, if you just have a little bit to lose, what should you do? So we're talking about specific strategies 
And the plan is to have someone who's had a lot of results in this area and have some type of con live consultation so you can hear the interaction. And then exactly as we did in this show, then you can have questions and I'll give you amazing answers and we'll give you a lot of direction around how to use nutrition to support all that awesome fitness training that you're doing. So for my VIPs, as we get into the physical fitness scorecards and all the other tools that you're receiving, this would be an awesome thing to help decrease uh, body fat and get that optimal body composition. And when I say body composition, the ratio of muscle and lean body weight to fat, that's what that means, basically. So next week, we will be going through that is going to be an amazing, powerful session. And um, if, if you have reasons for improving your speaking and business, Joel Weldon is my number one resource uh, and second and third and fourth and fifth. So he's amazing. So grateful to have each and every one of you here with us today. And I very much look forward to seeing you, uh, all of you next Saturday in the Full Body Fix online talk show and my VIPs in session. Much love to you. Make it an awesome, amazing weekend. Last thing, I'm dropping again the links. It's it's dot com, not dot net. No, no, it's dot net. Oh, I is it dot net? I think it works yes. both ways. Okay. Well, you're the genius. I'll trust you. <laughs> I tried before doing it. Okay. Here we go. We have the links again. And I will send to you by email along with the recording. Okay. Wonderful weekend. Bye, Mr. Joe. Bye, Bye, Princess. Bye, Bye Robbie.